Yes. Hello friends, my name is Chris and this is Faith Elements, where I try to explore some of the basic elements of a life of faith. Now on a hot day in June 2017, something very special happened at the Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati, Ohio. That was the day that a new bronze statue of Pete Rose was unveiled and dedicated. Pete is one of the greatest players to play the game of baseball. I grew up listening to games through my dad's AM radio on the garage tuned to 700 WLW. My dad took our family to a couple games a year at the old riverfront. This time it was my brother and I who were taking our dad to a game and I was glad we were there as the Cincinnati Reds honored Pete with a pregame ceremony on the field. During that ceremony, a humble and appreciative Pete Rose spoke. His words were impactful, well thought, and touching. Pete's first words were, I made the Reds Hall of Fame, and that's enough. If you know nothing of Pete's story, for reasons I'll not go into here, Pete hasn't been inducted into the MLB Hall of Fame. It's an issue that he carries with him everywhere he goes. Rather than letting the elephant in the stadium go unaddressed, Pete turned that entire stadium's attention to his blessings instead of those things that could be viewed as negative, and that entire stadium got it in an instant. Many fans, like myself, think Pete should be in the Hall of Fame for what he did on the field and not what kept it from happening because of his mistakes. But enough of that, back to Pete's speech. He didn't talk very long, but he talked long enough to give credit to a whole lot of other people. He was not hung up on taking credit for himself. He spent the majority of his time at the microphone giving credit to his fellow members of the Big Red Machine. He named players like Johnny Bench and Tony Perez, George Foster and others. He named them and pointed out what made them great. It was a touching moment for Cincinnati Reds fans and I was glad I was there to see it. Now, Philippians 2 contains this text, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Many of us have experienced those times when someone in our proximity has a tendency to grab the spotlight. In that speech, Pete could have stood there and basked in the glory of his own achievements. He worked hard for that statue and the associated spotlight and his place in the Reds Hall of Fame. He could have also spent some time taking jabs at the MLB for not letting him in the hall yet. And those in the stadium would have applauded mightily. Instead, Pete wisely and humbly pointed to those who helped him achieve greatness. He knew that he couldn't have done it without those guys. Who do you have in your life to thank for where you are today? Who comes to mind when you read the words, let each of us not look to our own interests? When you have that moment where you stop to think about how awesome your life is, who do you need to call and say thanks to? Beyond that, who in your life can you lift up and help others to see how awesome they are? Thanking someone for lifting someone up are ways that we can apply this biblical principle in our own lives. And that, my friends, is your faith element to consider for today. Thanks for watching.